Hello everybody and welcome to the first video in our solar power series. I'm Michael with Do It Justice and in this series I'm going to be introducing you to the fundamentals of solar power as well as the components that make up a solar power system. Another thing I'm going to be doing is taking you guys on a complete walkthrough of the 600 watt solar power system that I put on our Class C RV just to give you guys a practical application of how we incorporated all of these ideas. So I have three main goals when it comes to this solar power series. Number one, I want to share all of the information that I wish I had three years ago when I first started learning about solar. Number two, I want to demystify DIY solar. I want to make it less intimidating for people who are novices, who don't know a whole lot about electrical systems or solar power. Number three, I also want to create an online space in this infinite web of knowledge to where people from all different backgrounds can come here and learn and grow when it comes to learning about solar power. I encourage you to comment in the comment section below so that we can create a forum where everyone can come together, post questions, comments, tips, and we can all help each other out. You may be wondering why I'm creating this solar series because you can easily go online, buy a prepackaged solar kit, and install it yourself with easy to follow instructions. And of course, you're absolutely right. You can totally take that route if you decide. But with those prepackaged solar kits, they have three limiting factors. Number one, you're generally forced to buy one brand of products throughout the entire component. So the inverter, the charge controller, and the solar panels are all generally created by one brand, um, which may or may not be a good thing. Number two, the wire sizing on some of those prepackaged kits are wrong and they are limiting for your system. I'll get more into that in a future video. And then number three, you're usually paying more for less. The convenience of having that prepackaged kit and all those instructions, you're paying a lot of money for that convenience. So you may be getting lower quality components or you may be getting less wattage for your money. So keep that in mind. This solar series is meant for the DIY person who wants to control every component of their solar system and understand how they all connect together so that you can design a specific solar system that's perfect, exactly perfect, for your needs. Just a quick disclaimer, I am not a solar professional or a professional electrician, nor am I claiming to be either. I have done hundreds of hours of research on solar power, and I was able to use that information to successfully install a 600 watt system on our Class C RV, and my wife and I lived in that RV full time for over a year and that system worked extremely well for us. Lastly, keep in mind this video series is not a how to series, it's a how we did it series. So I fully expect you to use this information that I'm sharing as part of your overall research because when it comes to solar, everyone has their own specific needs and limitations. We're just sharing what worked well for us. Okay, let's jump right into today's topic. The question is, is solar power right for me? It's such an important question and to tackle it, you're gonna to need to be thinking about these three things. First of all, what are your goals when it comes to solar power? Do you want solar power to provide supplemental energy that can save you money over time? Or maybe you want solar power to provide a cleaner energy source that can be more environmentally friendly. Those are both really good applications. Or maybe you even want solar power to go completely off grid and be energy independent either in an RV, a boat, a homestead, or maybe a residential application. All of these things are totally possible with solar power, but you have to ask yourself, what's your goal with solar power? The next thing that you wanna think about is what do you want your solar system to power? Are you gonna be powering low power appliances like lights, fans, pumps, your computers, phones, those types of things? Or maybe you want to power really high powered appliances like refrigerators, AC units, heaters, all those very energy taxing appliances that can really suck a lot of power out of a solar system. Everything I just mentioned is without a doubt possible when it comes to solar power. And the beautiful thing about these electrical systems is they are virtually limitless. Whether you wanna power a small DC fan in a greenhouse, or maybe you want to completely replace your household energy needs with solar power, the possibilities are theoretically endless. 
But that leads me into my final thought on whether solar is right for you or not, and that has to do with what are your limitations when it comes to solar. I know earlier I said that solar power is basically limitless, and it is, but when you add in people and situations, that's where limitations arise, and you need to analyze what are your limitations when it comes to solar power. Limitation number one is budget. This is a huge one, and solar power systems can cost anywhere from a couple hundred dollars to tens of thousands of dollars. There's really that much variation, and the more power that you need to supply, the more expensive your solar system will be. So keep that in mind before you jump into solar that the more power you need, the more you're gonna have to pay for your solar system. Another thing is there is a very high initial cost when it comes to solar. Uh, yes, over time, you can earn your money back and pay off that system, but um, you have to realize that there is that initial cost that can really take a huge chunk out of your bank account. Technomadia has an amazing article out that has to do with the pros and cons of solar power. It talks about the budget breakdown and how long you can expect it to take before solar would pay for itself. So use that information. It is more geared towards RVers uh, because my wife and I do RV, but uh, you can take all of that information and kind of substitute your own variables when it comes to your own specific situation. But also keep in mind, we have found, Jenny and I have found, that there are other intangible benefits that may make the initial startup cost of solar more worth it, such as uh, being a little bit more environmentally friendly and also just having instantaneous power that you never have to pay for on a month-to-month -month basis. Uh, so those things you also need to consider when it comes to your budget limitations, but I just thought that uh, you should know that that is a pretty significant limitation when it comes to solar power. The second limitation is space. You have to ask yourself, where are you going to install your solar system? How many panels are you going to use? How many batteries are you going to need? And where are you going to place those things? If you live in an RV, a tiny house, a boat, you have much more limited space as far as both weight and surface area. For example, in our specific situation when we installed the solar on our RV, we only had a certain amount of space on the roof of the RV that we could install the solar panels. We also had only a few sub bays that we could install the batteries, and then you also have to consider weight limitations for the chassis. You may find yourself in a completely different situation where maybe you have a 100 acre farm and you have plenty of space to put your solar panels and your batteries, but just keep in mind that space limitations are very significant for a lot of people. The third and final limitation is where do you live geographically? Different locations get different amounts of sunlight per day on average. And this is direly important for a solar power system because it obviously relies on sunlight to produce energy. So to help you guys out with this, I'm gonna be linking some charts in the video description below. This will give you a good idea of how much sunlight your area gets on average per day. If you live in a place that does not get a whole lot of sunlight per day on average, that doesn't mean that solar power isn't right for you. It just may mean that you need to modify your solar system to accommodate for your specific needs. All of these questions you need to consider are not designed to steer you away from solar. It's simply designed to get you thinking about the practicality and functionality of solar given your current living situations. Again, I encourage you to use my ideas and these ideas I'm providing you as a launching platform for your solar journey. Thank you so much for watching guys. As you know, this will be a solar series. If you're interested in seeing future videos, make sure to hit that subscribe button down below. Also, if you like this video, hit the like button. And if you have any questions, comments, ideas, thoughts, hit me up in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you guys. As always, I will see you on the next video.